Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to create 3D depth in After Effects, like you see in this example here. It's actually relatively easy, and all we need is a few lights, a camera, and some photos. So let's dive in. Hey everyone, my name is Cameron with Motion Science, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. Today we're talking about how to create depth in After Effects using 3D lights, cameras, and photography. Now, if you're new to the channel, I do wanna invite you to download my free PDF guide, the complete guide to organic design in motion design. These are tips and tricks that I use in my own workflow to create the work that you see here on this YouTube page. Uh, these are super simple techniques that will elevate your design to a whole new level. If you're tired of digital design and you want that more cinematic feel, definitely download the guide. It's motionscience.tv slash guide. It's absolutely free. Go download it after this video. Okay, so let's dive in and let's explore how to create 3D depth in After Effects. Okay, so here we are, blank canvas. I've got a composition set up. It's eight seconds long. It's 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second. Click OK. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in this texture I have here. This is the texture I like to use for a variety of projects. And it's just a simple scratch texture like we see here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually scale this way up, something around here. And I'm going to hit this little tick box right here to make this layer 3D. And I'm gonna push this back in 3D space. And it might be easier to see this by going to two views and scooting this window over. And on this perspective, we're gonna change it to top. And if I zoom out, you can see here's our layer. And I'm gonna push it way back in 3D space. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in some mockups that I have that I created in Photoshop. What I did is I went into a stock site and I downloaded these templates that have a rough torn edge to them. And I plugged into these templates photography that I generated in mid journey. So these are all AI photos. And I wanted to do kind of a Cold War spy type theme. So there's image one, image two, image three, image four, five, and six. So back in After Effects, here are the, the mockups. I'm just going to Command C to copy and go into my composition here and Command V to paste. And then it's super important that I tick the 3D box here to make these 3D layers. And then the next part here is a little bit time consuming. It's just me moving these layers around in 3D space. I'm moving them back like so. It's just gonna take me a little bit of time to get these in place. So let me go ahead and speed through this process. Now I've got these layers in 3D space, but it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a camera by going to layer, new camera. And we're gonna use a one node camera. I'm a big uh, believer in one node cameras. They're simpler to use than a two node camera. I have many videos here on YouTube about this. Uh, and we're gonna turn off depth of field for the moment and use a 35 millimeter preset like we see here and click OK. Okay, so let's add a little bit of rotation to this camera. So we're gonna hit R for rotation and let's put in a value of seven and it's just gonna rotate the scene. Now, I saw the background rotate, but I didn't see the photographs rotate and that's because these Photoshop files are set up with pre-comps within them like I showed uh, earlier. Like we can see here, these are all pre-comps. So what we need to do is we need to double click and we're gonna move into each of these pre-comps and make them 3D. So let me show you on this middle piece here, if I double click it and I go in and I take both these layers and make them 3D, go back in here, you can see that that photo rotated because it's reacting to the camera now. So we need to do that for each one of these. We're double click, make 3D, double click, 3D, double click, 3D, double click, 3D, and double click, 3D. And you can see now all the photos are rotated and they're reacting to the camera. So let's go ahead and just close these pre-comps so we have less here on our timeline to look at. And next, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go back to the beginning of my timeline and I'm gonna hit P for position on the camera. I'm gonna set a keyframe and I'm gonna hit C to bring up my camera tools. And this tool here is a pan tool so I can move this and I can go back here and I can set kind of a start point, which I like. Mm, something like this. 
And then I'll go to the end of the timeline and I'll use my same camera tool and just drag somewhere up in here. Looks great. So now we have a nice simple movement across and you can see we're already getting some depth because we took the time to layer these pre-comps in 3D space and After Effects. Now, immediately this foreground one that we see here uh, is distracting. It's just too big. It's in our face. So let's actually scoot this one. I like this left edge better. So let's go to the end of our timeline here and let's bring it. Actually, we don't want to move that one. So let's go ahead and lock that one. And let's find this element here and let's just bring it across. And I want to see this left edge. So that looks nice, something like that. And maybe scale it down a bit. Doesn't need to be so big in, in our face. That looks nice. Now let's go ahead and lock that one as well. And let's just position this one maybe a little down, take this one, move it. I kind of like them to overlap a little bit. Looks nice. Go here to the beginning and we'll do the same thing. We'll move this one down and kind of move this one, you know, something. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Let's lock that background and let's take this one and maybe bring it down a bit. And then we'll just kind of move through our timeline again. It's looking pretty cool. It's got some interesting depth to it. Now I should mention that I was inspired to create this piece because I saw something on Pinterest. And if you're not following motion science on Pinterest, definitely do. There's a lot of great inspiration boards there for you to look at. But this piece had this red string that went across. It was almost like it was on a, on a push board and the red string was connecting each of these photographs like it was an investigation. And that's what I wanted to kind of emulate here. And it also give it some more additional depth by having a string kind of going across the scene. So I have a string that I again pulled in from a stock site pretty boring at this point, but we can tint this to make it red and you know more moody and a little bit more interesting. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go up to effect, color correction, and we're gonna use tint. And we're gonna map white to this red color that I found right here, which is really nice. So now I'm gonna make this layer 3D and it disappears on us and we need to bring this forward in Z space. We'll go back to our two views here and you can see that and we'll bring it forward oh, about, let's make it negative 500. I like to use even numbers when positioning things in 3D space and after effects. It just keeps things simpler for me. Uh, and again, it's, it's missing here. So where is it at? Let's just bring it down. There it is right there. And it's really big. So let's go ahead and scale this down. Maybe something like 30. And then what I'm going to do here is just bring this in and position it, rotate it, hit R for rotation, and kind of just play around with positioning here. And again, this can be kind of tedious, but we just want to look like it's you know connecting maybe different photographs. So I'm going to Command D to duplicate. And let's bring this one maybe across like this. And let's duplicate again, R for rotation. Maybe bring this one you know, maybe up in here. We also don't wanna overwhelm the scene with too much of this string. Now this one here is bothering me because it looks like it's kind of attached to that first one, which I don't want it to, I want it to have a little bit more spacing between them. R for rotation. You know, maybe something like that. And I'm looking to make sure that I don't catch the end of these at all. That's looking pretty cool. So let's also give it a little bit more visual movement by animating the string. So I'm gonna find this string, which is this one right here. And I'm gonna solo it, I'm gonna go to effect, transition, and I'm gonna find the linear wipe. And let's do, let's just, so you can see I'm just pulling the transition completion to adjust this. Now I wanna make it go the other way, so I'm gonna go negative 90 degrees here. 
And we're just gonna start maybe something like right in here. We don't have to always start at zero. And let's turn up the feather just a little bit and we'll set a keyframe here, transition completeness. And I'm looking to see when does this string leave the frame? Looks like it's around here. So at this point, I want the, actually wanna go the other way here. So if we watch this back, you can see like the string is growing as we're following it, which is interesting. Let's go find the next string here. Maybe this one's already there. And then we'll find the first one here. And we'll select this top one with a linear wipe again. And maybe have it start just off screen there. Give it a little bit of feather and have it come down. So it just gives us a little bit of added like secondary animation, which is nice. And it may or may not work. We'll find out here in just a minute. Let's go ahead and save that. Now comes the key is adding some lights to really give this some added dimension. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to layer, new, light and we're going to select a spotlight 100 intensity is great cone angle 61 great cast shadows we want to make sure that this is ticked click ok and then we're going to hit p for position and we're going to back this light up so that it affects a little bit more of the area and i found like i liked this position here then we're going to duplicate this light and we're going to hit p for position and we're going to move it over here and then we're going to actually open up the point of interest here and bring over the point of interest here now we've got some lights but we don't have any shadows right so we need to tell these layers to cast shadows again we can jump into these pre comps and for each one of these make them cast shadows or we can come in here and we can turn off this little button right there and then select all and then open up just one of them and under material options we're going to tick cast shadows on. And you're gonna see everything's casting shadows now. And just to be sure you could go into the next layer here, layer eight, open it up, material options, cast shadows, it should be on. So, so it looks like we're good to go there. And you can see now this piece has some really interesting depth in it right now there's a little bit like we're not seeing so much on the string on the left side here so what we can do is just start positioning our spotlights so we can play around with our point of interest our actual position same with the spotlight one And the thing I'm noticing also is our strings are not casting shadows. So we're going to select all of them. We're going to open up the layer, material options, and we're going to cast shadows on. And you can see instantly there's the shadows that are appearing from the strings. Now there's some stark contrast between the light areas and the dark areas. So to fix that, to bring a little bit more ambience to the rest of the scene, we're going to add an ambient light. So layer new light. And we're going to select ambient light and we're going to turn this way down to something like 10 percent and click ok and ambient light does not cast shadows but it brings light to the overall scene so that we can see more of what's happening so i really like this i do want to bring my spotlight one point of interest back over here a bit position it Play around with the position a little bit. Bring this photograph in just a bit. And this is where we just start kind of playing around with the composition to kind of balance it out.
And one effect I'm really into right now is film emulation by Dehancer. So I'm gonna add that over the top, layer new adjustment layer. Film emulation Dehancer Pro. And I really like the preset for Fuji Color 100. I'm also gonna turn on Bloom. There we go, it's looking pretty awesome at this point. I do like it. Now I do wanna see this red string, the second, like I like this one a lot. This one's great that it's already there. You know, maybe one goes across here. And then this last string, I do wanna see it, instead of going down like we see now, I wanna see it go up like we're following, the camera's kind of following it. And that's like, a, you know, it's kind of a principle of motion. Like the, the string is leading our eye. It's, the string is leading the camera uh, across the screen. So, you know, there's always things I can tweak, but that's one thing I wanna address really quickly here if I can find it. So we're gonna hit U on the keyboard and we're going to go back to the starting point here and we are going to reverse and make sure I can find it here. So let's say it's, I wanna get back here to where it's not on screen. So right there, was it a hundred? No, I think it needs to be at zero. But as we get here, there we go. So we'll go all the way to the end here, just like that. And now you can see the string is kind of leading the camera on the end here, which is nice. I also want to adjust this background comp here, I just wanna bring it over a little bit, maybe something like that. And then the ambient light, I also wanna bring it up. This foreground photo here at the end is just a little too bright or a little too dark for me. So let's try 20. And that's just too much overall, so we'll back that off. And we'll take the first spotlight and we'll try and open up the point of interest and kind of bring it over. That's another thing too, is like the, the spotlight, that could be interesting if the spotlight starts where it's at. So point of interest, take the keyframe to the beginning here. And then it, you know, it's like the spotlight's moving across. Like we're almost like following that spotlight. That could be really interesting. Something like this. And here at the beginning, let's just actually bring the spotlight even further over like this. That's really nice. I like that a lot. Makes it very moody. And I'm gonna preview this and call it a day. And that, my friends, is how you use 3D lights and shadows in After Effects with a camera to create some really interesting depth, some three-dimensional depth. Now, before we go today, I do want to remind you, if you have not downloaded my free PDF guide, The Complete Guide to Organic Motion Design, please do motionscience.tv slash guide. It's absolutely free and it's a game changer if you want to make less digital looking renders. As always, thanks for being here today. I'll see you in the next video.